okay moving ahead we have the you know questions related to the function right so we are being given with some functions fx equals to 1 minus 3x gx equals to x minus 1 whole square and hx is equals to 3 upon x where x is not equal to 0 so we have to find or solve some questions related to it let us quickly get into it we have around six parts in this and for each question we have different marks like part a is of one mark part b is of two marks part c is of two marks part d is of five marks part e is of three marks and part f is of only one mark so let us quickly solve them what are we being given with we know that we are having these three functions the three functions are fx gx and hx we have to first of all find g3 that means you can see that here for gx in place of this x we are looking at a 3 that means wherever you will find x in that equation we will substitute it by 3 that is what is called substituting the value of x by the given value right so let us quickly find out g3 for that we will write again gx is equals to x minus 1 whole square so this implies that g3 is equals to in place of x we will put 3 so it is going to be 3 minus 1 whole square and then when we solve it we get 3 minus 1 to be 2 so it is going to be 2 square and what is the square of 2 yes it is just 4 so we get the value of g3 as 4 right guys this is the answer for this part that is why it's, it is very easy that's why it carry only one mark moving ahead guys next part find f of x minus 2 giving your answer in its simplest form guys very important part what is fx given to us fx is given as 1 minus 3x right if we recall and if you look at it fx is given to us as 1 minus 3x so if we solve it in place of x now i see that i have to substitute x minus 2 isn't it so wherever i find x in this function i'll substitute it by x minus 2 so let us quickly do that as well what are we being given with we know that fx is given to us as 1 minus 3x so this implies that f of x minus 2 that means in place of x we will substitute x minus 2 is equals to 1 minus 3 multiplied with x minus 2 when we further solve it we get f of x minus 2 as 1 minus 3 times x is 3x and minus 3 times minus 2 would be plus 6 and that gives us the answer as 1 plus 6 is 7 so 7 minus 3x so we will write f of x minus 2 is equals to 7 minus 3x that is the answer for this part of the question we have substituted x y x minus 2 and we got the new function right please note it down for the reference and then let us move ahead with the next part now what we need to find oh it's an interesting question guys we need to find f inverse of x how do we get the inverse of a function we know that function is generally in terms of y y being the subject and you know we are being given y in terms of x so to get the inverse of that function we just change the subject of the function like it was a y earlier then we will convert in into x being the function and then we will replace that by f inverse of x i am solving it for you you'll understand it better when we solve it what is given to us fx is given to us as 1 minus 3x so i can take fx as y isn't it so y is actually equal to 1 minus 3x isn't it and when i sub you know transpose it i want to make x as the subject of this equation so first of all one comes here it becomes y minus one equals to minus three x let us now put minus three on the other side so this would become this thing 
and if I take out minus 1 common from here it becomes 1 minus y upon minus 3 this negative sign cancels negative sign so we get the value of x as 1 minus y upon 3 this is the f inverse of x this x can be written as f inverse x is equals to 1 minus y upon 3 so what is the value the answer is f inverse x is equals to 1 minus y upon 3 that is the answer of this question it's very easy as i told you we just need to change the subject of the equation fx can be written as y so y is the subject over here y is dependent x is independent so we just change the subject we make x to be dependent on y and that is f inverse x note it down for your reference and then we'll move to the next part of this so now moving ahead this is quite an interesting question we have g of fx g of fx minus gx times fx equals to 3x cube plus ax square plus bx plus c so what we need to do we need to find the value of each of a b and c there are three variables guys here unknowns these are some constant values that we need to find out that could only be done when we solve this and then equate it with this equation there then only we will be able to get the values of a b and c so let us quickly do that what is gx gx is x minus 1 whole square and i see in place of x we are having fx so and what is the value of fx fx is general is you know 1 minus 3x so let us try to write it okay now we have ample of space for our working so we have to solve this g of fx minus gx fx we need to first find this if we get this then only we will equate it with the given equation so let us quickly find out what would be g of fx for that i will first write gx what is gx gx is x minus 1 whole square isn't it now in place of x i am writing fx so that means in place of x here as well i will write fx minus 1 whole square and what actually is fx fx is 1 minus 3x so let us put fx as 1 minus 3x minus 1 whole square isn't it in place of x we will put fx and the value of fx is 1 minus 3x so what are we getting i'll rewrite this 1 minus 3x is g of fx because we are in need of it 1 minus 1 is 0 and it is going to be minus 3x whole square so g of fx comes out to be minus 3 square is 9 and x square is x square so we get g fx as 9x square now i will use it in the given equation we are being given with g of fx so i'll write it again g of fx minus gx fx let us find it out is equal to g of fx we just got as 9x square minus what is gx x minus 1 whole square and what is fx fx is a 1 minus 3x so we need to multiply these two terms as well so 9x square minus x minus 1 whole square we will use the formula of a minus b whole square that is a square minus 2ab plus b square so this would be a square being x square minus 2ab would be minus 2x and plus b square will be plus 1 multiplied with 1 minus 3x so let us now do next thing what is the next thing we will open these brackets and multiply the terms of you know this expression with all the terms of this expression so if i do so 9x square minus x square times 1 would be x square 
x square multiplied with minus 3x is minus 3x cube. Now minus 2x multiplies 1 and gives us minus 2x while minus 2x multiplied with minus 3x is plus 6x square. Now 1 multiplied with 1 is plus 1 and 1 multiplied with minus 3x is minus 3x. Now we see that there is a negative sign outside the bracket. So we will open the bracket and change the signs of all the terms. Better would be to first you know simplify there it inside only. So we have minus 3x cube here x square plus x square will be 7x square. So plus 7x square and then we have minus 2x minus 3x that would be minus 5x and then we have a plus 1 over here. Isn't it? That is what it seems to be you know correct. Now let us open the bracket 9x square minus minus makes it plus so plus 3x cube minus plus is minus so minus 7x square negative negative is positive so plus 5x and minus plus is minus again so that is what it looks like and here if I rewrite it and arrange it it is 3x cube 9x square minus 7x square will be plus 2x square and then we have plus 5x minus 1. That is what is the equation or the expression I must say that we have received and also this thing is equal to this. So let us just you know shift this part a little bit to my left. And then we will solve it. Right, so we are getting it. Now let us compare. So yes, we have moved it aside guys and now we have the space for our working. Let us quickly solve it. This is the expression that we are getting and this has to be equal to this because we got it from this calculation only. So let us quickly equate them. So it is going to be 3x cube plus ax square plus bx plus c equals to 3x cube plus here we have got it as 2x square then we have a plus 5x and at last we have a minus 1. So if I equate it I get a equals to 2, I get b equals to 5 and I am getting c as negative 1. Right guys let us write our answer this is the required answer a being equal to 2 b is equal to 5 and c is equals to minus 1. So this, this was quite a long question that's why it is of 5 marks. So you need to note down all the steps required to solve this and I hope it's clear and then we'll move to the next question. Please note it down for your reference. So yes this question is done. Let's move to part E of this question. So here find hx minus fx giving your answer as a single fraction in its simplest form. Guys we have to subtract function fx from the function hx. Let us do that. Let us do that quickly. What are we being given with? First of all hx minus fx would be what? 3 upon x minus 1 minus 3x that is what we need to do right so if we further solve it hx minus fx is going to be 3 upon x minus sign gets in makes it minus 1 and minus minus becomes plus so this is 3 upon x minus 1 plus 3x so we have to write it in terms of a single fraction that means we need to take the LCM or cross multiply this. So if I take the LCM, the LCM of it would be x. So x multiplies minus 1 and x multiplies 3x as well. So we get the denominator as 3 minus x plus 3x square. If I write it properly and arrange it, hx minus fx is equals to 3x square minus x plus 3 
upon x so this is the difference of these two functions in the form of you know single fraction in its simplest form let us write it hx minus fx is equal to 3x square minus x plus 3 upon x this is the answer for this question i hope it is clear to all of you it's of three marks please note down all the relevant steps and then we'll do the last part of this question that is part f right let's move ahead okay now guys we are being given that h of x raised to power n is equal to 3x raised to power 7 and we need to find the value of n it's quite easy just in place of x like we know that hx in place of x we have to write x raised to power n and then we will equate it with this to get the value of n let us quickly solve it hx we know is 3 upon x right so this implies that h of x raised to power n is equals to 3 upon x raised to power n because in place of x we need to write x raised to power n but h of x raised to power n is actually equal to 3x raised to power 7 so this implies that both of them are going to be equal so we can write it as 3x raised to power 7 is equals to 3 upon x raised to power n or i would write it in the other way around 3 upon x raised to power n is equals to 3x raised to power 7 isn't it guys that is what it looks like right let us now quickly solve it this 3 cancels this 3 and x raised to power n can be written as x raised to power minus n because when we reciprocate it we will get the negative exponent so it is x raised to power minus n and that is equals to x raised to power 7 so since on both the sides of the equation we have the same variable that means their exponents must also be equal so this implies that minus n is equals to 7 so the value of n is actually minus 7 isn't it guys this is the required answer let us write it n is equals to minus 7 right very easy question just for one mark but even then we will write all the relevant steps i hope it is done let's move to the last question of this paper that is this question number 12 so yes now the next question the last question of this paper paper 4 i must say is related to vector right we are being given with ox and oy being the coordinate axes and a and b are two points on that quadrant and we are also being given with the coordinates of those points so we have to write some column vectors of oa and ob we also need to find the equation of the line joining the points ab in the form of y is equal equals to mx plus c we also need to find the equation of the perpendicular bisector of the line ab and also we need to find the length of pq when ab is extended and also the perpendicular bisector of that line joins or meets the y-axis so let us quickly solve it what we see over here o is the origin definitely o is the origin whose coordinates are 0 comma 0 a is point 8 comma 1 let us write it it is 8 comma 1 point a is 8 comma 1 and point b is 2 comma 5 so this is 2 comma 5 and this definitely is 0 comma 0 being the origin right guys so write down as column vectors the first column vector is vector ob let us join it let us use some shapes for that so we have to join join o with b right this is the column vector ob right let us give an arrow to it as well this 
this is column vector OB. So this, this is actually vector OB and I have to write it in terms of column vector. So it's quite easy guys. OB will be what? Since we know that the coordinates of point B are 2,5. So in terms of column vector, it will be 2, 5, right? I should have a bigger bracket and yeah, this this is what it looks like the column vector ob is 2 5 right that is very easy moving ahead we have to also find out the column vector ab so to find out the column vector ab let us first join that you know if i join o with a and o with b let us do that quickly O A and O B and let us give it the directions. So this is vector O B, this is vector O A and then we have vector A B. Let us join A with B. Right. So what will be the column vector AB? We know that if we want to find out AB, it is going to be the difference of OB and OA, isn't it? OB minus OA will give us AB, isn't it? OB minus OA is equal to vector AB right that is what it seems to be let us write it quickly let us first of all even write these you know coordinates point a is 8 comma 1 and point b is 2 comma 5 so let us quickly get the answer ob minus oa so what is ob ob in terms of column vector is 2 5 minus OA would be 8 1 and when I subtract it I will get the vector AB so I am writing it only and the subtraction the difference would be 2 minus 8 would be minus 6 whereas 5 minus 1 would be 4 so the column vector here is 6 comma or 6 4 Right, minus 6, 4 is the column vector AB. So we will just mention here minus 6, 4. Right, this is the column vector AB. Let's move ahead. This was quite an easy question. Now moving ahead, find the equation of the line AB and give your answer in the form of y equals to mx plus c. So if it has to be line AB, let us draw it first of all. Let us join A with B. Right, this is line AB and then we are going to write the coordinates of point A that is 8 comma 1 and for point B it is 2 comma 5. Right, so if we look at it to find the equation of the line AB in the form of y is equals to mx plus c, we need to get m, the value of m. What is m? m is the gradient of the line. And how do we get m? m can be found out when we have the coordinates of the two points of a line segment as y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1. So we know what will be the gradient of this? m is equals to y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1 okay so for our reference only i'm writing point a is actually 8 comma 1 and point b is 2 comma 5 so if i take point a is as x1 y1 and point b as x2 y2 so i am going to get m as y2 minus y1 that is 5 minus 1 upon x2 minus x1 would be 2 minus 8 that comes out to be minus 4 sorry it is going to be 4 upon minus 6 which can be reduced further reduced as minus 2 by 3 because negative sign needs to be moved up 
so it is going to be minus 2 by 3 that is the gradient of this line and now we know y equals to mx plus c would be what we know that we can write or we can get the equation of a line by the formula y minus y1 is equals to m x minus x1 right let us write it y minus what is y1 it's 1 equals to m m is minus 2 by 3 x minus x1 is 8 right let us solve it a little bit and as we need to get it in the form of y is equals to mx plus c i'll transpose this negative 1 later on before that i'll try to open this so it is minus 2 by 3 x and then minus 2 by 3 multiplies minus 8 and becomes plus 16 by 3 so this minus 1 goes to the other side we have minus 2 by 3x plus 16 by 3 plus 1 isn't it and let us further solve it we get y is equals to minus 2 by 3x and if I solve it it is going to be 3 times 1 3 16 plus 3 is 19 so we get it as plus 19 by 3 isn't it guys so this is now of the form y equals to mx plus c where m is minus 2 by 3 and c is 19 upon 3 let us write it down y is equals to minus 2 by 3x plus 19 upon 3 isn't it let us just check it quickly have we done it correctly yes minus 2 times minus 8 will give us plus 16 so it's 16 by 3 and when we transpose minus 1 over here it becomes plus 1 3 multiplied with 1 is 3 16 plus 3 is 19 so definitely that's the correct answer right we have written down the equation of line a b by finding out its gradient first and then we have used this formula to get the answer in the form of y is equals to mx plus c Note it down for your reference and we'll, moving, we, we'll be moving to the next part of this question. Let's move. Yes, now another interesting part. Have a look. Again, the question is same. O being the origin, point A being 8,1 and B being the 2,5. Find the equation of the perpendicular bisector of AB and give your answer in the form of Y is equals to MX plus C again. So first of all, let us join A with B. So here we have A, B getting joined. And now there is a perpendicular bisector of AB. So that perpendicular bisector will be making an angle of 90 degree with this and also will be bisecting or dividing it into two equal parts. So it would be somewhere here. Right guys? this is what looks like to be the perpendicular bisector this is 90 degree and we will consider this to be point c and that also happens to be the midpoint of the line segment a b so when we look at it we see that since we need to find the equation of this perpendicular bisector i need to have the gradient of that bisector and we know the relation between the gradients of two perpendicular lines what is it the product of the gradients of the two perpendicular lines is equals to negative one isn't it so if i take the you know gradient of line AB to be M1 and the gradient of the perpendicular of AB as M2. So M1 times M2 will be equal to minus 1. That is what we know. So let us quickly find out. For two perpendicular lines, m1 multiplied with m2 is equals to minus 1 so this implies that m1 let let us assume it to be the gradient of line segment ab so m1 would be what m1 we already have found out what is the gradient of this it's minus 2 by 3 so let us substitute m1 is minus 2 by 3 
times m2 will be giving us minus 1. We will transpose this minus 2 by 3 on the other side. So we will get the reciprocal of it. It is going to be minus 3 by 2 and that means m2 comes out to be 3 by 2. So this is the required gradient of this perpendicular line. Now also to get the lines equation we know that we have a formula y minus y1 equals to m times x minus x1. That means I need to have at least one point of that perpendicular bisector of AB. How can we get that one point? I just have written it over there guys. It's there in front of you. C is the midpoint of AB and that also serves as a of that you know perpendicular bisector so it's easy to get the midpoint of any line segment if the coordinates of the both extremes are known to us so let us use that and get the answer so here if i solve it this is going to be quite an easy task midpoint of AB. How would we get midpoint of AB? It is going to be C. That is going to be, you know, the coordinates of the points A and B are already known. So the midpoint of that would be X1 plus X2 upon 2 and Y1 plus Y2 upon 2. So that is going to be 8 plus 2 by 2 comma 1 plus 5 by 2. Very easy guys. The midpoint of any line segment is x1 plus x2 upon 2 comma y1 plus y2 upon 2. x1 plus x2 upon 2 gives the x coordinate and y1 plus y2 upon 2 gives the y coordinate. So we just have substituted the values. It is going to be 10 by 2 that is 5 and 6 by 2 would be 3. So now we have a point of that perpendicular bisector as well. So let us now use the equation y minus y1 is equals to m x minus x1. So in this case y1 would be this value 3 and m we found out to be 3 by 2 you can see over here and then we have x minus 5. So let us solve it. Y minus 3 is equals to 3 by 2x minus 3 times 5 would be 15. So 15 by 2 and then we will transpose that negative 3 on the other side. So it will become plus 3 and we will again further solve it. 2 times 3 is 6 minus 15 plus 6 will result in 2 minus 9. So we are getting the equation in the form of y is equals to 3 by 2x minus 9 by 2. So this is of the form y is equals to mx plus c where m is 3 by 2 and c is minus 9 by 2. So let us write our answer. 3 y is equals to 3 by 2x minus 9 by 2. That is the answer. This question carries 4 marks. So it's important to note down all the relevant steps. Better would be that you even show a figure over there. Right. So this part is done. I hope it's clear. Note it down for your reference. And let us now move to the last part of this question wherein we are being given with an interesting situation guys. Again now the conditions are same. The new thing that comes up is line AB meets the Y axis at P. Let us do that. Let us draw it. Line AB, if I join, this line AB is meeting this Y axis somewhere at point P. Let us extend it a little bit. So this point of contact, this point is P. Okay, this point. This point is P and also the perpendicular bisector of AB meets the Y axis at Q. So let us have the perpendicular bisector and it is meeting the Y axis at point Q. This is P, this is Q. We need to find the length of PQ. 
okay we know the formula for finding the distance between two points that is under root of x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square that means we need to find the coordinates of point p and q and one interesting fact point p and point q being lying on the y-axis their x coordinates are definitely going to be zero isn't it so we can take point q as zero comma Q, let us take it small q and we will take point P as 0 comma small p. That means we need to find out the values of P and Q. How can we get that guys? Do we know the equation of line AB already? Yes, we just found it. If I put the value of X as 0 over there, I will get the value of P if I take X as 0 and Y as P. So let us look at our equation. What was our equation? The equation of line AB is y equals to minus 2 by 3x plus 19 by 3. Let us write it down. Equation of AB y is equals to minus 2 by 3x plus 19 by 3. So here I'll put x equals to 0 and y equals to p. So this implies that small p is equals to minus 2 by 3 times 0 plus 19 by 3. So we get p as 19 upon 3. So that point is or I will write point p is 0 comma 19 by 3. Similarly, we can get the value of point Q or the coordinates of point Q. For that, we have the equation as y equals to 3 by 2 x minus 9 by 2. So, we will write it again. Equation of perpendicular bisector of AB is y equals to 3 by 2 x minus 9 by 2. I'll just recheck. Yes, that's the answer. Now, let us substitute x equals to 0 and y equals to q. So, if we do so, we will get q equals to 3 by 2 times 0 minus 9 by 2. So, that gives us q as minus 9 by 2 isn't it although I am not getting it over here but definitely that would have you know crossed it somewhere there okay so guys we are getting y is equals to minus 9 by 2 although that is just for your reference if we would have drawn it properly then this perpendicular line segment you know the perpendicular of a b would have definitely you know crossed this y axis on the negative side right so we got the value of uh, you know q over here this is q so i can take the coordinates of point q as 0 comma minus 9 by 2 okay Okay, so now let us find out PQ. We know PQ is going to be under root of x2 minus x1 whole square minus or I should write plus it's x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square. So y2 minus y1 whole square. So if we write it, we are going to get this is 0 minus 0 for sure and uh, y2 we will take it as 19 by 3 so 19 by 3 minus y1 so minus minus makes it plus so plus 9 by 2 whole square isn't it and when we solve it 0 minus 0 is 0 and 0 square is 0 itself and when we solve it 19 times 2 is 38 9 times 3 is 27 and here it is going to be 6 this is whole square so this is square cancels this is square root so pq comes out to be the sum of this 38 plus 27 will be 58 plus 7 that is 65 so it is coming out to be 65 upon 6 so what's the length as we are not being given with the units so it is going to be 65 upon 6 
length of PQ is equal. So if we divide 65 by 6, we are going to get 10 point, it is going to be 8, okay, so it is 10.8 units. The length of PQ is 10.8 units. Please note it down for your reference. We are done with the paper 4 extended one. So it's very clear that if we are of all the concepts, we can solve the paper within time and with you know all the accurate answers, you are going to get full marks in your mathematics paper. Guys, maths is that subject in which you can score full marks. So always be very accurate. You know, your calculation part must be very accurate. That will lend you to the right answers. And if concepts are clear, we can get the answers of all the questions, right? So I hope it's clear. All the very best for your exams. Please solve the questions of the other, you know, sample papers, or I should say the previous year papers, and definitely you're going to do better, or I should say best in this upcoming exams. Thank you so much, everybody.